Hey writers, I've done a few bullet journaling videos in the past, but every time I take this thing out, you guys get really excited and say you want more, including more of a breakdown of how I create my super simple, minimalistic, pretty yet totally no fuss spreads. Also just a disclaimer that most of the spreads I'm going to show you focus on creating and making sure you actually accomplish your goals. So even though I use this bullet journal as a writer and helping sort of set and accomplish my goals to write and publish my books and also some writerly business things that I do with some personal things. Really anybody can use these spreads and apply this sort of goal strategy and goals spreads to whatever goals you have in your life. In the future I might create some spreads that help me plot or help me create a self-publishing plan or different things like that that are a little more writer focused. So let me know if those kind of videos would be interesting and helpful to you in the future. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my bullet journal for 2020 in a little more detail than I already have. I'm going to show you in real time how I create my monthly and daily and weekly spreads and how I then use those spreads to make sure that I accomplish my goals and make progress. First, let's set up what my monthly spreads look like by creating my February spread. And then I'll give you a little look at what January looks like, pretty much all filled out and how it helped me accomplish a lot of my goals. The first page is just an overview of the month's events where I simply put the month's name along the side and then events and gratitude at the top. This is the page where I will mark all the big events I know about at the beginning of the month, but then also mark big accomplishments or memories I don't want to forget for each day. As most bullet journalers do, I mark the days with the first letter of the day and then the month's date, as you can see here. But to make it even more visually appealing and organized for me, I group days from the same week together, starting on a Monday because that's the day I start my work week. Then I further group the weeks together with a single line down the side of each week, as you can see here. Then I highlight every other line with one of my zebra or zebra, however you pronounce it, mild liner highlighters, which I absolutely love because they come in a variety of colors, but never bleed through the page, which if you're interested, all the materials I'm using are linked in the description below if you want to check them out. To simplify even more and make each month easily distinguishable from all the others, I usually pick just one color to use for each month. Then comes my month's goals page. Here is where I separate my goals into the ones that have to do with my writing slash author life business stuff and then my more personal goals. To fill this out, I then reference my 2020 goals and game plan overview page where I have my top three goals for the year broken down into quarterly and then monthly goals. So when I create a new month spread, I just flip over to this page and transfer the big goals into each category. And then I break them down even further into more specific steps here. If you want to see an even deeper dive into my 2020 goals and game plan and how I chose my goals and created this spread, definitely check out my 2020 goals video where I show you all the things. I also usually take a look at last month's goals page to see if there's anything I didn't get done that I need to move over. After this, I turn the page to set up the basic layout of the first week of the month. I then look at my month's goals and decide which goals I want to tackle in my first week and list them here at the top. Then I make the banner for the first day of the week, in my case Monday, and list out what items from the week's goals do I want to tackle on Monday. Personally, I don't like going ahead and setting up a section for every single day right away because as you can see with January, some days have bigger lists than others and I just really like making the most use of the space I have on each page. Basically, I try to focus on as few things as possible at a time, get those things done, and then move on to the next things, or push over things that didn't quite get done to the next day or week with the arrows you see here. That's literally all I do when setting up at the beginning of the month, and then I go day by day from there. Then at the end of the month, I take some time to look over the month spread and practice gratitude. 
Even if I didn't make all the progress I initially hoped, usually this helps me see that I did make more progress than I thought or that certain life things just happened that meant I needed to have grace with myself and not push myself so hard during that month. I can also see here if I got distracted by getting other things done that were not quite as important so I can make a point to refocus when I set up my goals for the following month. I also finally go to my future log, which looks like this, and I really should rename it because although I do put a few things like birthdays and big events at the beginning of the year in here, I actually more like to use it as a kind of memory keeper that I add to as each month passes. This way I can look back on a succinct recap at the end of the year of all the progress I made and the things I want to remember and can be grateful for. Because one of my goals is to keep growing my author platform, I also write in how much each part of my platform has grown at the end of the month here. Pretty simple, right? At the end of the day, these spreads might feel too simple for some, and sometimes I do really like taking time to be a bit more artsy or creative because it's just fun to be creative in other ways. I've even been thinking about maybe getting some stickers or something to spice things up. But most of the time, I love making it super simple like this so I can spend even more time making progress on my goals than spending time creating the spreads themselves. Two other tools I also now use a ton in conjunction with my bullet journal are my Google Calendar and a new Trello board I just started experimenting with to use as more of a daily Kanban board, which I first started seeing videos about this idea of a Kanban board from Sarah Cannon and a few other author tubers like Emily Bourne, but I heard about this idea of making a digital Kanban board with Trello from one of my patrons, Cam Mies, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is genius. I need to try this. So thank you so much, Cam. If you'd like a more step-by-step -step tutorial about how I set up my Google Calendar or how I've been using this digital Kanban Trello board thing, let me know that in the comments and make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss when those videos come out. But in the meantime, if you wanna see a bit more of how I use my bullet journal and my Google Calendar together, definitely check out my day in the life vlog, which I'll link here, or you can check out this other writerly related video and we'll see you there.